In this video, I am fixing my CL65 AMG and I think I might have had a breakthrough. Maybe. I bought my CL65 AMG very, very broken, and after an insane amount of work, it's less broken. But a car like this will always need something, and recently, I've been fighting a limp mode issue only after I go wide open throttle for about three seconds. The check engine light will start flashing and half of the cylinders shut down, but outside of misfire codes, the car doesn't tell me anything else. Now, I say I've been recently fighting this issue because you'll see in this video the weather changes a lot and that's because every time I hit a wall with this car I get very angry with it and I end up working on something else and after forgetting about the anger I dive right back in with high hopes which are always crushed but I just can't give up on this car so obviously I've had other projects on the channel people are asking me what's going on with the CL65 I work on it all the time okay this Get out of here, glove. But I've been stumped, I've been stumped until maybe, maybe right now. Take a look at this. I got a fuel pressure gauge going on and it's possible that we have low fuel pressure. Maybe, let's let's go for a ride. I'll show you what I'm talking about. It's, it's exciting, but I mean, the fuel pressure goes low, so hopefully we don't blow the engine, but it's exciting. Push button start. So right now we have about 55 PSI, which is good, but, but check this out. If I go wide open throttle, it goes down. So fuel pressure drops to the low 40s, which it shouldn't be getting anywhere under 55 PSI at wide open throttle. So it seems like we have a fuel pressure issue. Let's uh, let's go back to the shop. We, we may have gotten somewhere and we may have gotten really lucky. High intake air temperatures, low fuel pressure, that can equal boom boom sometimes. Now, because I wanna verify a thousand percent that we don't have an intake air temperature issue, I got a new toy, I got a thermal camera. So this white target here, gonna come up right there in the top left. And then this red guy is seeking out hot spots. So check it out. If we go over to our molten lava engine, we can see here the max is 184. So that's what you guys are looking at when we use this tool. So at the end of the last video, I was a little suspect that if we had air bubbles in the heat exchanger, which is this guy in here. So we're gonna go around here and take a look at the temperature of the heat exchanger. And there's our tube right there that goes to the intercooler pump. Right where the white target is, that's the heat exchanger, about 95 degrees. And we'll go to the other side here, 105 at the top. A Little hard to tell with everything around it. It's kind of sandwiched in between a bunch of coolers. But that's the radiator. That really hot one is the radiator. And there's the hose for it, about 124 degrees. That makes sense. That's the hot side. It's dropping about 20 through the entire core. Well, I haven't found a smoking gun with the heat exchanger. This is just kind of cool to see, to be honest with you. Oh, my hand. I'm 94 degrees? Am I dead? Isn't that really, really cold? Yeah, yeah, I'm dead. Uh, uh. Definitely dead. Let's see if there's any difference in the temperature of the intercoolers. They definitely look the same. Go a little bit closer. We're at about 114. This one should be a little cooler. It gets hit with the cold water first. So this is fine. Not that big of a difference. Seriously, shouldn't I be like 98 degrees? What am I? Yeah, I think everything is normal here, guys. The intercooler heat exchanger system is functioning properly now. Last time, as soon as we hit it, this thing would fall on its face. And then we did the pump, let it out, and it would let us do a few pulls, but then it would get really hot and it would start misfiring. Just all of a sudden, it would shut us down and misfire. And I'm starting to wonder if this is a low fuel pressure situation as well. This has a gigantic inline fuel pump and fuel filter. Let's take a look. The fuel pump and the filter are located underneath this. And there's also an ABC suspension valve block that haunted me for many, many weeks. Oh, look at that. Look at that in there. You see that? There's a piece of plastic inside of the accumulator. Look at that. What is this thing? Oh, it was a horrible time in my life. Some of you were there, but those days are over. Now we're just chasing down, you know, weird misfire, limp home, fuel pressure issues. There we are. Fuel filter fuel pump, and I hope this doesn't fix it. Because a couple of years ago when I was dealing with the ABC, I was like, yeah, 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 I'll replace this. It's clearly dated 2014. I'll get to that later. And then I never got to it because I was slightly distracted by the suspension that I couldn't fix. So yes, please don't be that. It's definitely the easiest thing to do. But right now what I wanna do is there should be a fuel pressure sensor. It's in line. I wanna disconnect this. There we go. And I believe this will max out our fuel pressure. So basically what happens is this sensor reads the fuel pressure and it can vary the voltage to the fuel pump depending on the demand. So this should kind of temporarily just max it out so we can see if, you know, if the car ever cuts out and goes in limp mode. I think, 
We're gonna try it. Hang on, before we go for a ride. And because spring is right around the corner, many of you have been asking me what the tire website is that I've shown in my previous videos, and it's PriorityTire.com. They have an amazing website that works great on mobile as well, and I do have a new discount code. It's going to be down below with their link, but they also have discounts for first-time buyers, military discount, teacher discount, and more. I've never seen another tire company do that. They also have totally free FedEx shipping so they always come in quickly and you can find an installer right on their site and have the tires shipped directly to them for your installation. You get a 90 day money back guarantee and their selection is amazing. So I've gotten a few sets of tires from Priority like the ones on my Chevy Caprice and my beautiful Chevy Express van. So I've put thousands of miles on these tires and on those tires, everything has been great. Whatever brand tires, whatever size tires you want, you can either search by simply simply putting in your vehicle's information, or you can search by size, and they literally have hundreds. This is the only website you need to find tires for all your cars. Oh, and check this out. Max got their Land Spider all-season 18-inch tires on a Chevy Equinox. They have a really nice pattern, super quiet, and he's put about 8,000 miles on these through our brutal Chicago winter, and they're phenomenal. This thing is unstoppable. So these are very budget-friendly. I think you'll really like them. Oh, and in case you know, you guys wanted to save even more money on tires. They list all of their factory rebates right on the main landing page of the website. So you'll never miss one. And some of these have massive savings. So if your tires are getting low and you're ready for a new set before spring, definitely give PriorityTire.com a try. It's a great company, phenomenal deals. I'll drop their link down below and my coupon code LegitPT124 to save you 5%. And with that, let's go for a ride. No, not in the DeLorean, my other silver-ish two-door car. Check out this fuel pressure. Ooh, she's maxed out, 70. So by doing this, we're testing out the electronic part of the system. So we know right now that it's giving the fuel pump maximum voltage. Let's see if it drops. Full throttle. Oh, it's still dropping. Okay, so yeah, it dropped down to like 44, 45, which is still below spec. It shouldn't drop below 55. So I think we have either a bad fuel filter or a bad pump. Let's, let's go with the cheaper of the two. I should have done this a long time ago, but we have a new fuel filter from FCP Euro, and it is specific for the AMG. Couldn't tell you why. It could be because Mercedes just stamped AMG on there to charge a lot more, but at least we know we're getting the right part. All right, so this has the one time, whoa, ah, get sprayed. Stop spraying me. <laughs> this says the one-time use clamps. You could technically reuse these, but we're not messing around. The days of trying to save money on my CL65 have long, long sailed away into the abyss. Yeah, a little pick like this is the easiest way to release these. There we go. All right, then you can just pry the hoses off like so. There we go. And this is the feed from the tank, so I have that clamped off. And I'll lose a little fuel, it's okay. Whoa. And by a little, I mean a lot. Why is that so much? Okay, I thought I'd let this sit for long enough to lower the pressure, but I, I did not. Oh man, I'm gonna reek going home today. Woo. Dude. There we go. Go to sleep now. Okay, so that's not how you do this. Wait, wait longer for the fuel pressure to drop. Don't be impatient. Now, I have a gasoline armpit right now. Who needs deodorant, right? Whoo, this is nasty. Let's keep going. No more pressure. Stop. Okay, we're good. All right, we can release the fuel filter like so. All right, and place your guesses down below, guys. Is the fuel filter gonna fix this problem? I have like no faith really in anything on this car. I've had so many smoking guns not fix anything. And I don't know, let's see if we got anything nasty in here. I doubt it. Yeah, probably not gonna fix it, but maintenance. All right, let's slide our new guy in. There we go. I'm gonna be replacing all the clamps with traditional hose clamps. There we go. All right, we'll put our tank line back on. Then we have your Squirt fuel all over your shirt line. And we'll tighten these guys up. Tighten our bracket up. Good there. Release this. I'm gonna go wash my armpit and change my shirt, and then we'll go for a ride. But let's see here. Oh, she's building. She's building fire. 
No. There we go. What's this gonna be at at idle? Okay. We're at about 55 PSI. This is what the sensor plugged back in. Let's try this again. All right, well, that's what the sensor plugged back in and it dropped down to about 45. So better than the first time with the sensor plugged in and the old fuel filter was hitting like really low 40. So not bad, but not good enough. We need to do a fuel pump. It's a 2005, it's, it's a really old fuel pump. It could just be worn out. We're gonna do this the smart way this time and actually relieve the fuel pressure. Okay. I am seriously not having any luck here, people. That happened, yes. <laughs> Wow, listen to all this. Jeez. That is kind of a little vapor locked, isn't it? Huh. All right. Almost done. Hey, at least I don't have to change my shirt again. There we go. We're good. We're good. You know, I didn't just order the fuel filter. I, I had no faith whatsoever. So I got the fuel pump from fcpeuro.com as well. There we are. And this is the factory Pureberg. And from what I understand, this is the same fuel pump that's on the Bugatti Veyron. Don't quote me on that, but that's what some people commented and it seems to be true. Okay, we should have no pressure now. Yeah, this is most likely the original fuel pump. There wasn't really a big issue with these, honestly. And that's precisely why mine's bad. I just have the worst luck with this car ever. This line's gonna spew gasoline from the tank. Do a little quick switcheroo there. There we go. <laughs> No. Ah. I relieved the pressure. Wear safety goggles, people, and masks, and just full-blown biohazard suits when working on your CL65. I relieved all the pressure. Come on, people. I gotta change shirts again. Seriously, though, wear safety glasses. This is bad. This is dangerous. Don't do what I'm doing right now. Okay. Now, I do have the battery disconnected. Not that these would be live right now, but this car tries to kill me at any chance it gets. So I disconnected the battery anyway. All right, so we have a nut right here. And don't drop the little star washer thing. And one more on this side that is not an eight at all. This side is a seven, so that way you can't mess up power and ground. You got it. Cool. And we just have a Phillips right here. And I think this will slide out this way. It's a big, big fuel pump, let me tell you. There we go. Are you bad? Are you bad? Probably not bad. All right, since I have that side kind of blocking me, I'm gonna sneak this guy in. I like that. Reinstall the one screw that holds it in, like so. And you must use the world's longest screwdriver every time you do this. Go back together with our electrical connections. Top wire's back on. Now we're just gonna slide this one here. Put on our little star washer. And what are these called? I don't even know the proper term. I've been calling them star washers my whole life. And we have our nut. Give it an Alex Torque spec. Click and cover these guys back up. Last up, new clamp. Definitely do not need an impact for this. That's good. We're gonna replace this guy with a traditional hose clamp as well. Screwdriver click, click, click. Okay, all right. We have a new fuel pump, a new fuel filter. In any normal situation, this would fix it. And yes, I have lost most of my faith in this car, but I'm just gonna revive that faith one last time. This has to fix this low fuel pressure issue. It has to. I don't think it's the sensor. We gave it maximum voltage by disconnecting it. This has to be a mechanical limitation, a worn out fuel pump. It's gotta be. I'm gonna go wash up again. Then we'll go for a ride. Okay, I've reconnected the battery. Come on, fuel pump. There we go. Hey, no check engine light. That's kind of nice. And we still have our 55. Well, let's just hope it stays there at wide open throttle. Didn't kick us out. I don't think it dropped. Please, 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 please don't drop. Please don't drop. Ugh. Check engine light flashing, limp home. That literally did nothing. Here we are again, people. <sighs> Gotta shut it off. Start it again. What in the world is wrong with this car? What? I don't know. I don't know. So something else I've just noticed is that the AC doesn't work anymore. It worked this morning, like on our initial runs, and now it's now it's just warm. Talk about like dreams being shattered in the last 10 minutes. Fuel stuff didn't fix it, and I have no AC. 
Great. Another part of this fuel system that I don't believe they even make anymore, and I found some used ones for like four or five hundred dollars, is this guy right here. This is basically a voltage box, and it receives its normal battery voltage through this connector. These wires here go directly to the sensor. It reads pressure and is able to increase or decrease the voltage depending on the need. So right now the engine is running, and I have both leads on the fuel pump, and we're getting about six volts at idle. And check it out. When we unplug this, the pump goes crazy, and we get battery voltage voltage at the pump. So this is kind of simulating if we went wide open throttle, it gives the pump max voltage for max output. All right, guys, I got a new shirt on. It's a new day. I've had some time to think about this. It is possible that this voltage box is bad. I've never heard of one of these going bad, but you never know. So right now what I'm doing is I'm probing the two main power wires from the car and that feeds into the box and then the box will reduce that voltage down going to the pump or bring it back up. Now the box clearly reads 13.5 with the sensor unplugged. So the system at its maximum voltage, we were only getting about 12.7. Right now I've probed those two wires coming from the car that feed the box and we're getting 13.8, 13.9. That's over a one volt drop through the box and that's with no load. It's possible the pump is trying to draw more and there is an internal issue with this voltage box that's causing the problem. It's possible. I hope, fingers crossed here. And just for good measure, we'll check the voltage at the battery. Yep, 14 volts. We're definitely losing a lot here. We're losing voltage and we need it. We need it for that pump. All right guys, I've rigged up some wiring here for some testing. So we have our ground and our power and we're gonna run this wire into the car with our meter. And I wanna watch this voltage under load. I'm okay with the new fuel filter. We needed that for maintenance. I'm also okay with the new fuel pump. It's almost 20 years old, so I'm good with that. But we really need to diagnose this voltage box because like I said, they don't make it anymore more, it's $400 used and who knows if you're getting a new one. If it's bad, we gotta do what we gotta do, but I, I need to see this. I need to see this with my own eyes. Okay, so with our wires in the car here, we can see we're at about six volts. Just curious, we give it some throttle. Yeah, about six volts with no load. Right, here we go, wide open throttle. And then it dies out. So right on that run, flash and check engine light, this thing is dead. I mean, it's not dead, it's in its limp home status, whatever. It's really hot out today, which kind of complicates things if the intake air temp is playing a role in this whole thing. Although this fuel pressure is not getting up anywhere near where it's supposed to. It's going in a limp mode almost every time. It's not really going over 12 volts. So I just pulled the sensor on there. So now, look at that, we only have 11.8. That's really bad, but let's see what happens under wide open throttle. And yes, I'm holding this all together with one hand and driving with the other. That's what you gotta do. Oh, there we go, got up to 12 there. Sweet, all right, let's do wide open throttle. Yeah, 12 nine's the most it's getting at, but it'll give us a longer pull with that. All right, let's see what we can figure out back at the workshop. You guys wanna see something cool? 13.2 at idle at the pump. Okay, it's hard to hold the leads on there, uh, but we have rigged up the fuel pump directly to the battery. And by rigged, I mean rigged. Yes, 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 this is what we have going on. So we have wires on the side, fuel gauge taped to the windshield. Nothing to see here, folks. All right, we're gonna do a little roller. It's kind of going crazy. Yeah, kicked us out. Fuel gauge is going nuts, though. And yeah, we're in limp mode again. Now it's kind of steady. Yeah, kick this out again. Eh, no change, no change. This is ridiculous. I don't know what to say. All right, I found something, guys. I found something that requires me to drain the entire fuel tank. So we're gonna use the gauge here. And since we have the fuel pump hardwired, I just have it draining out of the rail right now. I think there's like four or five gallons in the tank, so this shouldn't take too long. Fuel pump is done pumping. We had this much fuel left. So this is a five gallon, so roughly three gallons left. So the reason I drain the fuel tank is, look right there, this is the main feed right here. This hose eventually leads to the pump. So this is coming right out of the fuel tank. And I didn't know this, but that's a screen. That's a removable screen. So what if that's clogged? You saw these a lot on really old Mercedes, like 70s, 80s, 90s stuff. I had no idea a 215 chassis would have this. I even spoke with my Mercedes shop foreman friend, one of my other dealer tech friends. They didn't know either. They looked it up though, and we found it. So another... My, I don't know how many times I've crossed my fingers so far on working on this car, but doing it again, or maybe I shouldn't do it. I'm uncrossing the fingers. This is gonna be my, the peace sign. It's gonna be my new good luck thing. Peace. No peace. So this is a 22. Oh man, I can only get a stubby on here though. Oh, it's turning. 
Oh, that's the only luck I've gotten so far in the last few weeks of working on this car. I'm able to spin this off with my hand. That's great. Okay, fuel line is out. There's a little fuel. Can you imagine if this thing is just clogged up with like dirt and garbage and that's the actual issue? If that's the issue, I'm celebrating. I'm taking my wife out to dinner tonight. I'm not talking like Olive Garden or something like that. We're, we're gonna go somewhere nice. Maybe just get some deep dish pizza somewhere. All right, it is a 32 millimeter. Got that on the first try too. And we got a decent amount of room in here. Okay, there we go. Now let's see if we can turn this thing. Oh, it's turning. Yeah. All right, please be super dirty. There's some fuel coming out. That's cool. Gonna clean up our differential a little. There we go. Please be dirty, please be dirty, please be dirty. Please don't be totally clean with no issues whatsoever. <sighs> Are you serious right now? There's nothing wrong with this. You're supposed to be clogged. What in the world? We're feeding you full power from the battery. What is going on? <sighs> yeah, there it is, it looks fine. That really stinks. Guess we're not going out to dinner tonight. So I'll be here for the rest of my life. Just gonna blow this line out just in case there's a gigantic piece of something in it. Nope, I can feel the other end, it's perfect. Now let's just clean this off. Yay, it's just as clean as it was before. I'm gonna go ahead and put this all back together now. Well, even though this wasn't clogged up, the thread stripped out, this is aluminum, but the dealership had one that was only a day away. So we have a brand new one going in. And hopefully this guy just threads in. The other one had me scared because that would be a fuel tank replacement job if this, well, if this doesn't work. Oh, yes, sorry, before I could only get like a half a turn. Okay, we're gonna be good. I'm gonna put this all back together, put some fuel in it. And we'll continue on. Well, as you could imagine, that didn't fix it at all. I went for a ride, it did the exact same thing. So I'm draining the fuel again, but I'm back with high hopes yet again with the CL65. I think I may have a, another solution. The fuel pump in the CL65 is from the Veyron, which makes over 1000 horsepower. So I didn't think we simply had a lack of fuel pump issue. Also, many claim this pump is good to 800 horsepower, but I found out the Veyron uses two fuel pumps. The people claiming one can produce 800 horsepower are typically running them at a much higher voltage. And seeing as how this car is monitoring the fuel pressure, I simply can't add a boost a pump like what's on my Cobra to increase the voltage as it's very possible the car would freak out and set a code and then go into limp mode. And seeing as how replacing this fuel pump didn't fix the problem, we know that the original one is good, so we're gonna copy the Veyron and just add another fuel pump. I've already started the wiring. So luckily we have a battery in the trunk here on the CL, which isn't too far away from the fuel pump, so we're gonna add a gigantic relay and a nice fuse. Strip this guy and we'll add this terminal. Excellent. And this is gonna be our main power coming right from the battery. Now our fuel pump should never pull over 16 amps. So I'm using a 20 amp fuse for protection. All right, nice and accessible as well. Then you know I love my command strips for relays so we don't have to drill into anything. Keep it clean. We're gonna snip these little ears off too. There we go. And what's nice is we can put this right onto the battery and these things are meant to hold like, I don't know, 20 pounds or something. So this relay weighs practically nothing. So this is very nice and secure. Now, because I don't want the CL to know that we've done this fuel system, I am stealing what's called a hob switch from the Cobra. And yes, I'm still working on the Cobra. I'm just waiting on parts right now, but uh, I ordered a new hob switch. It doesn't come in for a couple of days. There we go but this is what we need. So the hob switch is a boost activated switch. So as soon as we get over four PSI, this will make a connection inside and complete the circuit for our relay. So it kicks on the fuel pump because I want the CL to run and drive just with its normal fuel system at all times. And then when we go wide open throttle, this kicks on our secondary fuel pump. The car should have its full fuel pressure at that point and the car's computer shouldn't know any different. First, we gotta see if this works. So right now it's electrically open and when we give it some boost, you hear the beep. There we go. Okay, cool, hop switch works. Very basic part. They're only about 20 bucks too. Now I have our signal wire going all the way through the car back to the trunk and I've already connected our terminal. So we'll slide 
one on here and one here. Doesn't really matter which one goes where. And we're using a factory hose off of one of the intercoolers as our boost reference. And we have it teed off to the factory map sensor, which rests right here anyway. And then I found a little connector, I think from the Grand National. It'll slide right over here. So Cobra and Grand National parts on the Mercedes, naturally. And I ran the signal wire underneath the beautiful chrome AMG sill plate and then into the trunk right here. So it just needs to connect to the signal going to the relay. So now we can connect our hob switch in like so. All right, we'll melt that in, looking good. Make it extra professional with a little heat shrink. All right, wiring is done. And now we could say goodbye to all of this with a very nice and thick piece of Mercedes-Benz carpet. There we go. Oh, don't forget the little, there we go. That's good. Here's the hob switch and the factory map sensor connected. I'm completely done with the fuel system outside of putting fuel in it and checking for leaks, but check this out. If you guys wanna add a second Bugatti Veyron fuel pump to your Mercedes 65 car, you don't have to hack up the factory system at all. So this is the factory feed line coming from the tank. This is the one that connected up to that filter that we replaced. And what I bought was a brass Y barb fitting. So we have the feed going in here. This is a five eighths. And then we have a couple pieces of fuel rated hose going right to the inlets of the pump. So this is very, very low pressure. This is just gravity fed from the tank and the pumps will suck the fluid over this way. And then I added another Y barb right here. And that takes the outlet of the pumps, this one and this one, puts them into two and then throws them into the fuel filter just like factory. And then everything is connected and ran well, just like Mercedes intended from here. So the fuel now coming from both Bugatti pumps goes in here out of the fuel filter and these lines are all untouched and then it runs to the front of the engine. I did move the voltage box over a little bit so I could fit the pump nice and snug right in here. That way our plastic cover fits, but the car is going to run just like it does from the factory. It's not gonna know that it has a second pump. So we're not gonna get any lights or any issues with this. Then once the switch under the hood senses over four PSI of boost, it's gonna make its connection, send power right from the battery to our second fuel pump. And, and the rest is, is history, Ho hopefully. Let's see if this even fixed it. Now, before I go ahead and install that plastic cover that goes in the bottom, I wanna check for leaks here. So this thing's pretty full. This is kind of an awkward little way of holding this, isn't it? This car will go through this five and a half gallon jug in like 10 minutes. Worst gas mileage ever. So what was that stat that they talked about a lot when the Bugattis first came out that it can go through an entire tank of fuel in like 13 minutes at wide open throttle going like 200 miles an hour or whatever it was. I wonder if the CL can do that now. Hmm. I'm just gonna prime the fuel system. Okay, we're good there. And it doesn't look like we have any leaks yet. I just wanna hear that secondary fuel pump kick on so we'll jump this. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's running. All right, no leaks, so far so good. Back. She's back. Hopefully she's really back with all of its power. All right, everything is looking great, guys. Awesome, we put our cover back on. Oh yeah, fits perfectly. Awesome, I mean, I definitely tested this before I mounted the pump there, of course. Now you can't tell we did anything. Guys, I'm so nervous right now, you don't understand. Every time I think I fix something on this car and I'm about to go for a drive, I'm just so nervous because of the disappointment that could ensue if it's not fixed. But man, let me tell you, I am gonna be celebrating if this thing doesn't drop fuel pressure and the check engine light and all that. Oh my gosh. All right guys, it's not summer. The weather's not the best, but as long as this fuel pressure doesn't drop, we're good. And I do have a dyno appointment set aside just in case this works. Let's see. All right, let's see what we got. Here we go, I'm getting into it right now. It hasn't kicked us out yet. All right, all right. Uh, it didn't go into limp mode, it stayed I think around 55 to 65, something like that, which is acceptable. Okay, let's let's do it again. I don't want to get a really good test here. Oh, ripped them. Woo! Oh yeah. All right. Oh, that was nice. That was nice. All right, guys, I'm in manual mode here, and I'm bringing this up in RPM. Let's see. Oh, it feels good, guys. Oh yeah. Woo! All right. Cool, I can't get too crazy here. It's starting to rip the tires loose, but yeah, I mean, it's so far it's pulling, you know, I've done this a few times now and it's it's 
nice with the additional fuel pressure. That makes a lot of sense. If the fuel pressure was dropping down to below what the sensor thought was acceptable, it would throw the car into limp mode. What doesn't make sense is why the car doesn't give me a code for low fuel pressure, but who knows? It's an old Mercedes computer. I don't know, but it is feeling pretty good. Yeah, it feels nice. I will say this though, guys, I remember these cars being just a little bit faster. Like it does still feel a little bit choked up to me. And I, I have a theory behind that. I think the catalytic converters might be slightly clogged. If you guys remember many CL videos ago, I had a hydro lock situation, an injector stuck wide open. And so it's possible that it clogged up that cat or did something to the cat. So anyway, Let's, let's see what's going on with the catalytic converters. All right, guys, I'm going down the path of clogged catalytic converters right now. So what we have going on here is a voltage reading from the front O2s. So this is bank one, sensor one. This is bank one, sensor two, and then bank two, sensor one, and sensor two. These guys right here should pretty much be flatlined around like a half a volt, something like that, if we're just normally cruising around. So everything looks good now. And you can see here on D cell, everything goes to zero because it shuts down fuel on D cell. So that's normal. Now we're back in it. And yeah, okay, so you can see that this bottom sensor right here is pretty much just staying exactly the same. And this sensor here, the other rear O2 sensor, is moving a little bit with bank one. I know this is all confusing and weird right now, but basically we have one rear O2 sensor that's doing something different than the other one, which could coincide with a clogged catalytic converter. All right, so I've let this car cool down for a while and we are going to remove the entire exhaust system to take a look at these cats and look what I'm up against, people. Look at that V-band right there. That bolt seems okay. That one, I don't even know where it is. Oh, it's not gonna break. Oh, good job, whoever put this together. The other one was actually super easy with a swivel. We're good. I have the bolts out of this side as well. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's V-banded, so that's pretty nice. Right on the turbo. Ooh, we'll get, we'll get to see what's inside of there. All right, all of this should come apart fairly easy. I replaced most of the hardware when I did the engine like three years ago. All right, gotten all the bolts out. Get out. Okay, there we go. Let's inspect and see what we see inside of this catalytic converter and maybe clean it. I have both of the exhaust pipes and the catalytic converters out and in the wash bay. Let's take a boroscope peek inside. And all right, it's a little bit spotty in here, kind of dirty. Let's check the other one. Yeah, I've definitely seen worse, but you can see it is slightly clogged. And when you're talking a V12 engine with a couple of turbos, it can be sensitive to back pressure and and this could cause more back pressure. So let's clean it out. When I worked for the city of Chicago, we were maintaining a fleet of like literally tens of thousands of vehicles and the cats were expensive and sometimes they would get dirty and we would clean them. This also happened a lot with the DPF filters on diesel vehicles. So if you guys remember a couple videos ago, I used this release all service cleaner on the inside of the C4 tailpipes and it cleaned the soot up basically right away. So I'm gonna spray some in here and we're gonna pressure wash it and see what happens. We would just use normal degreaser at the city and it worked well. Yeah, we're just gonna fill this thing up. This foam's really nice. And we'll get this one as well. What's nice is we have access to the middle of the cat right here. Oh yeah. <laughs> this is great. Oh man. Release the soot. All right, I'm really loading this thing up. I wanna see if anything will even come out. Anything? Oh man. That's crazy, I put a lot in there too. Nothing's coming out of this thing. Might be really clogged. Pressure washer time. Oh man, you can just like feel it's clogged up already. All right, some of it's coming through though, so that's nice. So curious to see what this is gonna look like with the boroscope afterwards. But we're definitely getting through now. Well, look at this, guys. We're getting a ton of soot out. Yes! It's the old Italian tuna. Look at this. That is all soot. Nice. Watch what happens when I spray it in here. It starts puking out the front. Woo! Oh, yeah, look at that. <laughs> this is awesome. So satisfying. <laughs> Doing it through here is what really agitates it, I think. There we go, get out. All right, this is gonna take a while. I'm gonna keep going here and then we're gonna boroscope and 
see if it looks any better. Oh, and this Release All Surface Cleaner is really great and you can use it on almost everything. It's made in Wisconsin and the owners are really cool. They gave me a coupon code for 10% off, so I'll leave that in the description box for you. I have rinsed out these cats for a very long time. We don't have any more soap coming out. A little bit of water trickles out every so often, so I'm going back together with the O2s. And check this out, my air blower fits perfectly into the exhaust. <laughs> Yeah, look at that. Stuff comes out all the time. It's crazy. Oh my God, I swear I've rinsed this out a million times. But uh, this is a horrible, unscientific test, but this flows really, really well. Air's coming out. I think we're good. And here's what the inside of the cats look like. They both look the same now, and that's a beautiful thing. And you can see kind of the light reflection in there from the camera. So light is going right through. I think we've cleaned these up pretty well. So I'm gonna bolt the exhaust back up and, and we're gonna, you know, test it. Another, another spirited test drive. All right, you know, I gotta start this thing up with open turbos, right? I mean, how, how do you not do that? What is it gonna sound like? <laughs> <laughs> wow, I was not expecting that. Sounds kind of weird. Huh. You definitely hear those turbos though. Right, here we go, turbo spinning away. We know those are working, but man, did you guys expect it to sound like this? It kind of sounds bad. Like, I don't I don't like this at all. Obviously, you would never run it, you know, with open turbos, but weird, right? I gotta say, the seal exhaust is actually pretty light considering it's massive, massive size. And luckily, fairly easy to remove. There we go. Going back together is just absolutely horrible. The angles, the angles to tighten up this V-band. See right there? I mean, what in the world? Look at that. Look at what I got going on with this extension and swivel. It's for the love of the game, people. The love of the game. All right, everything is tight. This is my last piece of hardware. We're back together, people. And this is a base tune file that we're uploading right now. And this is specific to all the mods that I've done to this car. So I gave the tuner the information on the larger fuel injectors, the hybrid turbos, the ported heads, uh, and I think that's about it. And uh, yeah, should be a pretty good base tune. All right, exhaust is back together. Tune is done. Runs like a champ. Yeah, 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 service, whatever. With the new tune, it lets us rev it up higher in park or neutral, and we're getting a ton of more turbo sounds, and uh, that could be the freed up exhaust too. Guys, I'm feeling good, I'm feeling good. Guys, look at all that. <laughs> That's all the water that is just steaming out of the exhaust. That's awesome. We really cleaned it. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let that bake for a while, get all that steam out of the exhaust, and then we'll hit it and see if it, you know, if it works. All right, so I had to drive it around for quite some time before all of that smoke went away. But let's see if it feels any better. Oh yeah. Wow. That pulled, guys, that pulled. That felt way better. Let's do it again. Well, it doesn't matter how fast we're going either. That's what I love about the V12. That feels great. Okay. <laughs> I gotta be really careful because it is wet outside and it just rips the tires. Very controllable though, this car, I must say. Um, but yeah, that feels a lot better and a dead giveaway for me at least for the cats being clogged was how different this car sounded right when we first started it up. I'd never heard the turbos and the blow off valves and stuff like that at idle. So yeah, I definitely think that helped. Um, and this is something you guys can try at home as well, guys. If you have a cat that you suspect to be bad or clogged um, and you have to take it out anyway, if it's not too big of a project to reinstall it, try cleaning it out. It, it could fix it sometimes, not always, but sometimes. I'm gonna drive home tomorrow morning. We have an appointment at Cannonball Garage on the dyno. I'm feeling pretty good. It hasn't gone into limp mode in quite some time now. We have good fuel pressure. We have a cleaned out exhaust. 
So fingers crossed for tomorrow, Cannonball Dino time. I made it to Cannonball. This is about 45 minutes away from my house. The car was flawless. It is of course raining again, but that doesn't matter because we are on a dyno and Stan is about to fire this thing up so we can synchronize RPM. Sounds so good. Guys, I don't want to do exhaust on the CL. Honestly, I think it sounds just so good. Factory, especially for this kind of car. You guys, you guys heard it without the exhaust. I don't, I don't know, I don't want to risk anything like that. It sounds great like this. We are of course in dyno mode. So all of the nannies have been turned off. We are also in manual mode for the transmission. So what he does to calibrate it is he gets it to 4,000 RPM, holds it, and that, that's it. I'm gonna be doing some logging with my computer. So right now I'm looking at upstream and downstream map sensors. This has both. We have our wideband. This is my portable one so I can stick the sensor in the tailpipe. And Stan is in the driver's seat and we'll see what happens. We're just gonna do a, a light run at first and feel it out. Gotta be gentle with the CL. Godspeed M275. Oh, and this is not all wheel drive, all right? It's an all wheel drive dyno. It's just how it's gonna look. Check engine light. Oh no. No, oh, no, 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 no. Don't tell me that. Oh, jeez. Oh, you gotta be kidding me, guys. It uh it did the same thing. It kicked them out. 280 horsepower, great. What? You gotta be kidding me. It did it did the same thing. Like it doesn't actually make 280 horsepower. It did the cut. You know, this is insane. Like I'm I, I'm able to rip it like through first and second gear pretty good. Uh you know, I I can't test third gear and, and stuff like that in this rain especially you know it's been difficult but what in the world we're, we're gonna try it again i'm gonna look at the log that's funny 470 foot pounds of torque at like 3,000 rpm this is why it feels like halfway decent on the street but yeah i don't know man i don't know if this thing feels the way that it should feel to be honest with you it's been so long since i've driven a properly operating v12 the power delivery is a lot different on these things it's not like the supercharged v8 cars that just rip you know, instantly. These things are more like a rocket ship. So I don't know, I don't know. It runs beautifully, right? When you shut it off and start it off again, it's, it's fine. I gotta say, this looks weird to me. Pressure of the downstream map sensor, that's what that is. And we're at 4.6 PSI upstream. So before the throttle body is at atmospheric, which that makes sense. This should read vacuum, I would, I would imagine. And these two other pressure sensors are in the air boxes. That would be right here and right here. And those should be reading atmospheric right now as well. So this is the one that has a weird reading and it is a new sensor. I've replaced so much on this car when I did the engine job while I was in there. Well, let's record. Bam. All right. I'm gonna watch all of this live as well. With our fuel, these guys should equalize. None of these numbers mean anything. 320 horse, doesn't matter. It did go rich there, which is weird because I have tested air fuel on this car many times before and it was running just normal, like in the 11s. It did go rich there before it cut out, but it did cut out yet again. This is so crazy that this is like an intermittent thing now because sometimes it doesn't kick you out. I don't, I don't get it. I don't know if it, under more load and it's going rich. All right, so right now I'm gonna move the freeze frame data so we can see what these pressure sensors are doing. So let's see, where is full throttle? It should be right here. I didn't pull it too high. This is wide open throttle right here. The two pressure sensors are reading the same, which is normal, that, that's good. Now I have checked manually and the car's only making about 15 or 16 PSI of boost. The pressure sensors are reading 21 though in the computer. Now that could be a translation issue with my computer because it's not really making 21, 22 pounds of boost, which that's what it should be making. 15 is low, but I've used a mechanical gauge, like a known good gauge, just stuck on the windshield like I did with the fuel pressure. And 15 is maybe 16 is the most. And that shouldn't be adding atmospheric at that point. 
point. So that should be a true reading as well. All right, guys, I just want to see if we have something maybe going on with the throttle body. Uh, I have definitely checked that actual value as well in the computer when I floored. It is saying that it is wide open, but what if it's actually not? So even though our pressure readings from the upstream and the downstream sensor are equal and they seem to be normal, I am really just suspecting a throttle body issue at this point. I just want to physically watch this thing move. So I've removed the Y piece so we can do that. All right, when you start it up, you can barely tell this thing is open. That's normal. Let's open it up. All right, go a little more. It's opening. Oh yeah, all right, that works. Yeah, I mean, this thing is making boost. Feels very equal on both sides of the intercooler. Everything seems normal. Man, this is very frustrating, guys. Very, very beyond frustrated at this point. I don't, I don't even know what to say. Our, our sensors are reading fine. The throttle body seems to be working fine. No codes. I mean, what in the world? It runs so good. It just, you can drive it, you know, from here to California, it's, it'd be fine. It's just wide open throttle for an extended period of time has the issue intermittently. All right, everything is back together under the hood and it keeps on doing the same thing. So at this point, uh, I'm kind of just dead in the water here on the dyno. Uh, it could be a bad throttle body. I have to now investigate why it's going so rich when it never would do that before. When I was testing this a few months back with the same issue, before it would cut out, it wouldn't go rich. It, would, it was just fine. AFR was good. And now we have that thrown into the mix as well. So I don't know what to say, guys. I just, uh, I don't know. I'm going to ponder life right now. I found a map gas torch here at Cannonball. Hey, Stan, is that, is that gasoline? Yeah, why? Uh, can I borrow that? This will fix everything. All right, guys, obviously I'm kidding. I'm not going to burn this car down. Or am I? This would make my life much, much easier. But in the end, I always just go back to uh, working on this car. So I think at this point, after speaking to the guys at Modern Master, speaking to OJ at Fluid, I mean, we've all been bouncing ideas around like crazy. I think I just need to drop this off at a dyno with a tuner and kind of go from there. Unfortunately, the tuners are mostly all remote. So the one that has been sending me base file for this one is in a different country. It's very difficult to communicate and time zones and all that. But yeah, I, I think that's that's where I'm at. But you know what? I think I'm gonna try a throttle body before that. I don't know. You can see guys, I'm just, I'm already thinking, I'm already gonna be continuing on working on this car. So I am so sorry that I didn't fix it in this video. That definitely was my intention about five months ago when I started filming this. But yet again, this car has disappointed me I, I'm thinking about getting some specialty plates that just say disappointment. Anyway, guys, um, before I burn this car down, I'm going to let you go. I uh, thank you for watching this video. I don't even know what I say at the end. Like it, share it, subscribe, all that good stuff. Say a prayer. And uh, I'll see you hopefully in a way more happier ending of a video next time. Could just be... But they stamped AMG on there and then, and then everybody's able to charge. It could be because they just stamped. From what I understand, this is the same fuel pump that's on the Bugatti Chiron. Chiron? Bayron? What's the first one? Bayron? Yeah. So this is kind of simulating if we want wide open throttle, the sensor. So this is kind of simulating if we want wide open throttle, the pump's going to give it more juice. So this is kind of simulating if we want wide open throttle and it's just giving the pump a ton of juice. So this is... We were only getting with the sensor unplugged, so the system at its molt. I don't know why I'm, I don't know why, but. <clears throat> Good. All right, let me try that again. Now this fuel pump should never pull more than 16 amps. So we're gonna protect this with a, now this fuel pump should don't. Now our fuel pump is, in case you're wondering uh, what I'm filming here, it's this thing, it says boost a pump. Here we go. All right, I'm completely, I'm completely done with the fuel system outside of checking. So let's put this, so let's put the exhaust back together and go for a ride. Fingers crossed. Yay. Oh, let's see. So let's put this, so I'm gonna put the exhaust back up.
So let's bolt this exhaust back on the car and see if we have more something. <laughs> 